they just finished writing a Torah. I do investment management for the cannabis industry. It's a walking contradiction. How do you view others who choose to dress more provocatively? My name is Batsheva and I'm an Orthodox Jew. I've always been obsessed with fashion and experimenting with different styles in my wardrobe, but every time I look at images of Orthodox Jewish women in the media, we're always represented as wearing the same oppressive black clothes. So I decided to visit different Jewish communities in New York City to find out whether Orthodox Jewish women really all dress the same, or is there another story altogether? Welcome to Flatbush, one of the biggest hubs for Jewish food and fashion in New York. It is home to a large Syrian Jewish population as well as a large community of Ashkenaz Orthodox Jews, colloquially known as Black Hatters. Some of the biggest Orthodox Jewish trends always stem from Flatbush, so I wanted to explore some of the neighborhood's most iconic shops. My Mother's Armour is a vintage boutique focused on modest fashion and it always bursts with color. It was a relief for me to go shopping here as unlike regular vintage shops, every single thing I tried on actually covered my knees and collarbone. Today, they're hosting a pop-up for LA-based Orthodox Jewish brand Mia Mod, whose skirts I personally wear like almost every day. My name is Leah, I've come all the way from Los Angeles, California to do a pop-up at my mother's armoire, even while the owner of my mother's armoire has very graciously opened up her space to us and I'm so grateful she's been a doll. Our classic skirt is a fit and flesh shape, which is so flattering on any body type. So this length is, for example, 25 inches. That's the standard length that all the religious Jewish shops carry so that people can cover their knees. Yeah. However, the skirt also comes in 20 inches and also comes in 30 inches. So that's why I say it's so inclusive and the flattering of the fit and flare. I got this shirt at a thrift store for $2. This is from, I have no clue. Okay. <laughs> this slip dress is from Zara. Your shoes I got yes. somewhere in the city. Could you tell people what you do for a living? So I do investment management for the cannabis industry. We have a company called Canvestments. That's just <laughs> yeah. so cool. I've never met an Orthodox Jewish woman who does it's, that. It's a walking contradiction and you know we're at a time where like they're just starting to come around to it. It's really exciting. So I just tried this song. It definitely looks like it's 80s. I love it so much but she said that I need like a little bit of alterations for it but like oh my god. So whenever I'm in New York I always come to the store to buy tights because a lot of Orthodox Jews cover their legs with at least something even if it's just sheer skin color tights. So I always stock up whenever I'm in New York because a lot of out-of-town communities like where I live like in Boston we don't have a tights store that caters to people who need to uh, cover their legs <laughs> I consider Crown Heights to be like the hipster capital of Orthodox Jewish America. It's filled with up and coming eateries, artistic creatives, and like tons of Doc Martens. It's also the headquarters for Chabad Jews, an Eastern European based Hasidic sect following the teachings of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Chabad Jews tend to be very extroverted, focusing most of their Judaism on outreach for other Jews around the world. This makes Crown Heights honestly like an incredibly welcoming place for all types of people to be who they are without judgment. Hi, my name's Nicole. So I live in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. I'm also an FIT student and I work part time in Manhattan in the fashion industry. I'm me. Oh my God, you're just so cool. You're just so cool. Starting with the hat. Yes. This is my friend's merch, basically. My uh -huh. friend Kava runs a seasonal shul called Townhouse and she has such cute merch. This coat from H&M. H&M, we love. A long dress from H&M and I actually tailored it because the slit was really high up. Oh, H&M belt. Thank you. <laughs> and some boots from Steve Madden. Oh, and your bag? Yes, my bag is also from Steve Madden. Why do you think so many religious women struggle with tznias or modesty? I think we were taught to, you know, cover this, cover that, but are we taught in detail why I should actually care about this and uh -huh. how it really contributes to my life? I think that's maybe something that maybe some communities or families or schools are struggling with. Maybe right. they don't emphasize that enough. This do. is a seminary that the Rebbe himself created. It's a Valchiva seminary for girls who are just trying to explore Chabad more and their Judaism more. My name is Miriam. This is Zara. It's called Stradivarius. Stradivarius! Oh, yeah. I know that brand. I got it in Ukraine. Also come from Ukraine. Oh, also come from Ukraine. It was made there. And shoes. Got from a friend. Oh my god, I love the velvet. What about your bag? It's Michael Kors. Can I see your nails? 
Also made in Ukraine. So from the top, I guess I have my headband. I don't know if it's from maybe like Target or something. Uh huh. This is from Hefker. I just got it yesterday. <laughs> this is from J. Crew, I think. Cute. This is from Hefker. The skirt. So um, cute. The leggings. They're from a friend. The shoes are from Forever 21. You could follow all of the myths, folks, except for Sneas, and no one knows you're Jewish. Wow. But the moment that you put Sneas on, people are like, "Whoa, you changed your life. Wow. Like, are you okay? <laughs> like, wow. you know, they." Like, they start asking questions where you're like, no, this is who I've been on the inside. I've just slowly started to change how I'm dressing on the outside. I have only been like doing sneeze for the last month and a half since I've been. Wow. I, I love it. Like, <laughs> I can like decorate myself in incredibly beautiful ways. I don't need my skin to be my deck decoration that can be more just mine. I just feel like out of all the neighborhoods in New York, like the Jewish neighborhoods in New York, this one is the most hipster, the most fashionable. People want to be creative. We want to have like freedom to be creative and be yeah. maybe like a little hipster and a little hippie at times. Yes. Like, Crown Heights, you could be whatever you want. Oh my gosh. They just finished writing a Torah. And oh wow. We're having a whole party because a Torah was finished. Oh my God. Thanks for you. Oh yeah? Yeah. Yeah, what? What? I got the good. It's like a conductor's hat and it's really cute. It needs Ooh. to be like lint rolled. Oh my god, wait. It was in storage, but I've... it's gonna look very good on you. Oh, wait, can you hold the camera and see? I would love to. Okay. What an honor. Okay. okay. I'm a vlogger now. I'm a vlogger. <laughs> What's up? Hey guys, come with me on my day through Manhattan. Wait, <laughs> okay, I okay, okay. on me now. Okay, okay, I really apologize for the way that I look. I did not think Stop, that you look good. Stop. Stop. I, no, Stop. Okay, fine. You look good. Bye. Hey, oh who's she? Wait, this is actually cute. Yeah, it is. Who's okay, she? Okay, no, we're, we're keeping it. Wait, this actually looks good with like what I'm wearing now. It does, even. it's a vibe. Thank you. Take a little, do a little spin, do a little walk, do a little model walk. Hey, who's she? Who's she? Oh, give us an attitude. Give us an attitude. Hey, <laughs> hey, love it, love it, work it. <laughs> Look at that smile, folks. Look at that smile. She cutie. <laughs> and my no makeup face. Okay. <laughs> Your no makeup face is slaying. <laughs> This is Borough Park, one of the largest Hasidic communities on the East Coast. It's home to a large variety of Hasidic sects, each with their own religious customs, outlooks, and dress codes. Borough Park is a tight-knit community, known for its charity organizations and its emphasis on chesed, or acts of kindness. The dress code here is definitely more conservative than Crown Heights or Flatbush, but restriction does not always mean oppression, and I wanted to explore the beauty that some people find in Judaism's more restrictive dress codes. My name is Leigh Devorah Yagutkin, and I am a proud yeshivish Jew. A lot of people wanted to know why yeshivish people will always dress in black. I don't wear black very often. We could actually take a look into my closet. Oh, okay. Here's some beige. Guys, I have a lot of laundry hanging up in the laundry room, but okay. there's usually more colors. A lot of pinks, a lot of whites. Oh, look at that, more whites. <laughs> Some blues we got here, some navy blues, some grays. And there's literally like two shirts that are black and an ultimate of like three skirts. So the stigma of we only wear black is not true. It's for every single person itself. Mm -hmm. Some people just look skinnier in black. Mm -hmm. as when I ask my friends, like, why are you always wearing black? It's such a depressing color. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, I look skinnier in it. So I'm like, okay, whatever floats your boat. How do you view others who choose to dress more provocatively? Whatever you choose does not make you a lower person. It does not make me look down on you, downgrade you. Everyone should wear whatever they're on, on their own levels. But if you ever walk into a religious area and they're staring you up, the <laughs> people stare at me in bar park. People stare at me all the time because I do not dress like a Hasidic woman. I don't think that they're looking at me and they're like, oh my God, like, what is she wearing? It's cause like, they're just not used to a person wearing like, Doc Martens. Just making it clear, they stare at everyone, even their own mothers, grandfathers, fathers, brothers. As they stare, they just stare. <laughs> Come to Bar Park, we'll stare at you, but it's yeah. like a friendly stare. <laughs> yeah. But only one section of American Orthodox Jewry live in New York. The rest lives scattered across the United States in what we call out-of-town communities. Growing up in LA, I always took fashion inspiration from the world around me. All the creative styles on Melrose, the artsy thrift shops, and the social media culture all influenced the way I shaped my wardrobe. 
I feel like this holds true for most Orthodox Jews in LA who like to find the beauty in the world around them and incorporate it into their Judaism. But just to be sure, I visited a few LA friends of mine just to see what they had to say. Hi, my name is Lele. I'm from LA, but I currently live in Baltimore. I moved out here about a year ago. Growing up in Los Angeles, there was literally fashion all around me, all around everyone there, which was always really fun. I am an Orthodox Jew. In our religion, once you are married, you are supposed to cover your hair. So this is actually a wig. Sometimes I choose to wear a little hat. I know it's a little crazy. So like, I'll see something like this on ASOS, super trendy corset style kind of top. And I'm like, I want that but I also dress modestly, so how right. am I supposed to do this? You just put it on top of the button down and it's perfectly modest. We got this midi pencil skirt. Oh my God, and your nails also... match. Wait, show me your nails. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got this little collar chain off of ASOS. Oh my God, it's so cute. And then so I just have cool. one on this here. Slip dresses, like slip skirts, are a fan favorite. Imagine in the summer, like a cute, thin, like white t-shirt, either under or over in the winter. Sweaters. Sweaters are your best friend. Sweaters and slips. Just think sweater, sweaters and slips, the two S's. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! It wow. looks so good. You did good. Yeah. You did good. Wait, should we accessorize her? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Here's the hat. Is Nomi's hat. I just add backwards. <laughs> <gasps> what do we think? We love. Yeah? This is very fall. Yes. Yeah. This is very fall energy. Amazing. We love. Energy. We love. <laughs> <laughs>